Hello again, wrestling fans. It's me, it's me, it's the R.O.B. That's right, it's Rob, the real Bobby Munson, coming at you with another edition of Rob's Rockin' Wrestling. And I have to first of all say that I apologize that there hasn't been any new content as of late, so I apologize to my dedicated fan base there that I have just uh, been a little busy at the moment, a little preoccupied. But uh, things are back on track, and we are going to see a, a lot more content coming uh, right away. In fact, uh, this week in particular. So we're going to do a quick review here of last night's Monday Night Raw. Tomorrow, we're probably going to break down SmackDown. This is, might become a regular thing, doing each show individually. I uh, haven't quite decided that on the format. So uh, just bear with me at the moment, but I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of uh, different versions of the podcast here with uh, different uh, different angles. Anyway, so last night, uh, the go-home show for Monday Night Raw, leading into this year's Survivor Series, one of the big four events for WWE. So yes, uh, definitely a show that most people are going to want to tune into to see what pans out. And again, not a bad show, uh, one of the better go-home shows that we've had. But considering how big Survivor Series is, uh, it almost felt like some of the episodes of Raw prior to this one were a little bit stronger and stuff like that. But again, you know, not that I want to take anything away. Uh, Night started out, Stephanie McMahon coming out, uh, doing an angle where she's addressing Kurt Angle and what his preparations are for going into SmackDown, you know, saying that he's, you know, put Jason Jordan into Team Raw as where SmackDown's gone and got John Cena on their team kind of thing and saying that, you know, there's no comparison between the two and that, you know, Kurt might not be making what is the best decision for Monday Night Raw. Uh, the Shield come out, uh, they run a promo as well too. Stephanie McMahon making fun of them for not having their tag team titles. Uh, it matches then set up the New Day versus the Shield uh, we all saw coming is going to take place at Survivor Series. What a great addition to that pay-per-view card coming up for this Sunday. Uh, next on the show, we had a Survivor Series qualifier. Uh, one thing I'm going to say about a Survivor Series qualifier one week prior to Survivor Series seems a little deflated, like you're not doing enough to promote the actual show. I almost feel like both sides should have had their rosters picked for the Survivor Series matches already so that they could focus in on the actual match itself and not worry about having these qualifiers Needless to say, Mickey James, Bailey, Dana Brooke, in what was a you know a decent enough uh, match. Uh, a lot of it went to commercial break, which was a little bit frustrating. So we didn't get to see a lot of it. Uh, Bailey picking up the win. She'll be joining Team Raw there. Um, but yeah, the attack uh, Oscar on Dana Brooke was uh, quite interesting to note in this one. Uh, cruiserweight match. It was Drew Gulak, Enzo Amore taking on Kalisto and Akira Tozawa. Uh, again, you know the cruiserweights. I find uh, you know given the opportunity to perform, get to do an awesome job. Uh, Enzo's credibility as a character has brought a lot of light to the division itself. I honestly think it would be great if some of the rumors are true, like Rockstar Spud coming there and also Hideo Itami possibly coming up from NXT to join the Cruiserweight division. It would definitely make 205 Live a lot more interesting and maybe with time and the right preparations and stuff like that, 205 Live could end up becoming something much more enjoyable. I mean, it is you know, it's not a very, you know, a program that's been running for a long time. I mean, if we look back on things, let's let's go back to the beginning of Monday Night Raw. I mean, for its time, it was a great new addition and stuff like that, but it wasn't spectacular. I mean, it was an hour-long show. We usually had one really solid match in there, and the rest was kind of just goofy filler and promos and stuff like that and it took time to really develop what raw would eventually become and maybe that's the case with 205 live i mean with the modern day uh social media and internet it's kind of given us this you know platform to complain and complain and complain and stuff like that but you know are we only doing damage to a program like this uh at, you know 205 live yeah i can see what the issues are with it uh from the fans point of views and stuff like that especially after getting what was an amazing cruiserweight classic and then being given this in particular uh this 205 live show but i honestly feel that there is a lot more that 205 live can provide to the fans and i think wwe with time will 
you know, iron out the kinks, find what's going to work best and move on from there. So, you know, a decent enough match. Uh, then we had some uh, Miz TV. Yes, uh, Miz TV featuring Cesaro and Sheamus. And as much as it seems funny to have Sheamus, or sorry, Sheamus, uh, Cesaro talking with that mouthpiece in, it is kind of getting old pretty quick. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to hear what he's saying. This particular Miz TV really just didn't do a whole lot for me. I don't think it really did a whole lot for the build to Survivor Series. It just kind of was there. <laughs> so it uh, d- didn't really help either the Miz with his whole thing against Corbin. Like, it's almost like that match feels non-existent at this point. And Sheamus and Cesaro building for the Usos. Again, it just... it. It feels like there wasn't much there because it's a lot of last minute changes to this Survivor Series card. So it almost feels like we haven't had preparation to prepare. Not saying that this card's going to be bad or anything like that. Just we haven't had the opportunity to fully, you know, get the promotion we need. Uh, Up next, Bray Wyatt taking on Jason Jordan. Um, Bray Wyatt returning to in-ring action after being out for a little little while here. Uh, Again, Bray Wyatt picking up a loss at this point. You know, we can sit here and complain all we want, but this is what this guy does. He just eats losses. It's a, you know, it's, there needs to be a shift. And I hope there's going to be a shift because Bray Wyatt is the type of character. I think, you know, he doesn't necessarily need to be champion, but he definitely should be booked stronger than he is eating an upset win to Jason Jordan. I mean, yeah, it helps Jordan a lot. And yes, Bray Bray Wyatt got the heat back afterwards once he attacked Jason Jordan and put the injury down on him, which essentially, you know, is the story that builds up to what's going to happen later in the evening with the whole Team Raw scenario and everything. So, you know, it was an interesting way to build it. It almost feels like, especially after having time off, Bray was not the right choice to get pinned by Jason Jordan. But then again, who is at this point? So, uh, yeah, so interesting. Uh, gets more interesting as the night goes on. Up next, we had a Paul Heyman uh, promo hyping the match with AJ Styles. I mean, we all know Paul Heyman is excellent on a microphone. Uh, that's what he does. He promotes. He helps promote big matches. The match against AJ is going to be uh, an interesting show, and he definitely you know, did not put AJ down. He definitely built this up as being a match that is worthwhile watching. So definitely going to be interesting to see what ha- what unfolds in that particular match at the same time i feel that for all the time brock's had off promoting that he's coming back and then having him come out and stand there with Heyman. i mean jesus christ you could have had Heyman just do that anyway i don't think you needed brock they did brock to hope to gather the tv ratings but if you're going to gather tv tv ratings why didn't you have something happen you know you, you you know, I mean, yeah, it would seem weak to have AJ get into the actual building itself, but you could have had some sort of video message. You could have had them think that AJ was getting into the building, you know, almost have him tinker with a little bit of a mind game with the beast kind of thing. Get Brock a little bit on edge and then, you know, from there have Brock on edge backstage as they think that AJ might be in the building lurking or something like that. I mean, again, I could be wrong. Who am I to say? But that's just my thought. I think a little bit more could have been done with the use of Brock Lesnar coming back last night. Uh, Next, we had the Shield versus Cesaro, Sheamus, and The Miz. So, yes, the Shield finally getting that match together, United. Uh, Great to have the Shield back. Great match. Uh, Good uh, match to have at this particular point in the night so you know built up to this shield picking up that pivotal win uh, making them look strong going into that match with the new day which we know should be a possible you know match of the night uh sort of situation i mean the new day very popular team uh shield obviously one of the most popular three-person teams ever so yes i uh, definitely hyped for that particular match uh Next, we had Kurt Angle come out, and he was to let Jason Jordan know that he was no longer going to be part of Team Raw, only Kurt was having trouble exactly telling Jason this. Uh, Jason pleading with him, saying, you know, you fought with a broken neck and won a gold medal. Let me fight. Let me fight. Despite the injury that he was selling from Bray Wyatt from earlier in the night, Kurt saying, it's not possible. You know, I can't let you do that. It's not in your best interest. And out comes Stephanie McMahon. No, sorry, I retracted. Uh, 
I, I retract. Yes. Sorry, I retract. <laughs> sorry, I better. Had a bit of a brain fart. Um, but yes, uh, no, they emerged to come out um, and said that if she, if uh, Kurt couldn't make the announcement, then somebody else was going to. And it was actually Triple H that came out. I apologize. I, I got mixed up there. It was uh, Triple H who came out. And he said if Kurt can't make the announcement, then he would... It, Jason Jordan no longer a part of Team Raw. Now it will be Triple H on Team Raw. Uh, it kind of balances the teams out a little bit more in that sense. So this is going to be quite the showdown at Survivor Series. Next, uh, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe being forced to team up against Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. And, you know, it was a pretty decent match. We know that uh, anytime you see Samoa Joe and Finn Balor in the ring together, whether it's on the same team or against each other, you're going to get quite the showing. These two guys obviously have great chemistry in the ring, whether they're fighting together or fighting against each other. So yes, uh, Balor and Joe picking up the pinfall win here. And then on to our main event, Braun Strowman versus Kane. And once again, WWE making Braun Strowman kind of this spectacle to watch and stuff like that uh, many big moments teased in this match but what it ended up being was a no contest when a running power slam put Kane through the uh through the ring apron or whatever so yes so the ring collapsed underneath them Braun and Kane went through straight to hell I guess you could say so yes once again a big moment for Braun Strowman on Monday Night Raw this continues to make him look strong make him look like the monster he is especially when he is taking out guys the caliber of Kane especially the way they built Kane up since his return as well too so that was Monday Night Raw the go home show leading into Survivor Series so yes this weekend is going to be the Survivor Series uh, I will have a predictions uh Recording up soon enough here, folks. Uh, probably later today, tomorrow, kind of thing. I'm, you know, I might hold off till tomorrow, till I've watched SmackDown tonight, to make my final predictions because I want to make sure everything is all put together and finalized. You know, you know, WWE like to make those last minute changes. You never know what could happen. So. That's uh, going to be it for my Monday Night Raw review. What did you think of the show? If you like the show and you are not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button uh, on YouTube here. It really helps me out. Uh, thank you to my current list of subscribers, 25 of you and growing. I uh, never thought I'd be able to say that. And to everybody who has checked out one or multiples of my videos, also thank you very much. I've seen a rise in viewership recently, and I want to keep that trend going. So thank you very much to everybody out there who has done anything to help me out on this channel. And the for now, top guy out. <laughs>